in this uh, cooperative resource-based economy, yes. I would like to know what kind of system will decide how resources will be distributed. Very good. Um, actually, I, w I would like to know how it would be, be how it would be dealt with uh, in the transition okay. period where there will exist scarcity. Okay. okay. We have a lot of films and discussions and meetings of a lot of people seeing films on the thinking of a resource-based economy. And when people seem to be qualified, they grasp it, you become uh, an informer in what the Venus Project is. You go out and teach other people. You understand? So yeah. it's a transitional educational period of film showing when he says, I'm interested myself, why should I give a shit about anybody else? We show him that he's alive because Louis Pasteur did work and invented a vaccine. But Louis Pasteur did not get paid for what he did. He did it because he believed in what he was doing. Same with Jesus, Martin Luther King, Gandhi didn't do it for money. They tell you money is the incentive system. It's also incentive to corruption, embezzlement, taking care of your brother-in-law. You know, it isn't a good system. To how to decide who will... Oh, will what first thing we do have to ask is questions like, what kind of world do we want? Well, everybody must agree that we have to clean out the slums, take care of the sick. If they all agree with that, then we design that type of world. We design cities that take care of people, like the round city with everything in the middle, so everybody's the same distance. All big buildings will have medical care, dental care in the building, and schools, so you don't have to take your kids somewhere. So we decide how to conserve energy. So you have to standardize the rooftops with photoelectric cells. You can't make each rooftop different. Then you'd be wasting resources. And you can't produce a lot of stuff if everything is different, if every car is different. We turn out the best automobiles we know how to turn out, just like the Army Air Force has the best airplanes America knows how to turn out. It doesn't have cheap, old airplanes for some soldiers, new airplanes for others. They're all the latest, with laser beams, machine guns, cannons. You know, they don't have different grades of warship. You have the latest aircraft carriers for the Navy. Do you understand? Yeah. We don't turn out any cheap automobiles or old <coughs> automobiles. We turn out the best the world's technology can turn out at the time. But the automobiles are larger and smaller, but they're machined well. They're better than a Rolls Royce. Because we don't want cars to wear out and break down. That's a burden on society. Do you understand that? But in the profit system, if your car wears out, I sell another car. So it's called planned obsolescence. That's cruel. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's wrong? What if in the transition phase that some reasons become scarce and there's not enough to go around? Yes. What kind of electronic digital system? Well, what we do during the transition, we say, if you don't want somebody coming into your house stealing your stuff, take your bicycle, put it in the bicycle center, put all your wheelbarrows and farm equipment so the whole community can go and access it. When you're not using your lawnmower, it's at the center. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So in the interim, if your eyeglasses Although it's been surpassed, your eyesight has to be, you put it in the eyeglass sensor. All your surface things that you don't need, you make available to other people. So you share things. Do you understand? Yeah. That's the best you can yeah. do under those conditions. Of course, but perhaps there wouldn't be some kind of prioritizing to be made. And who gets uh, food okay. first or who gets We plants? now know that there's more than enough eyeglasses in stores and windows to, to provide everybody. There's coffee pots. There isn't a shortage anymore, except intentional shortages. You know, where they keep, you know what plowing under means? If the food market isn't selling, they plow under on the farm, turn over the crops, so that you have to pay a higher price. Whatever uh, is scarce, that's what would be worked on also. Yeah. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? There's no scarcity of anything. Mm -hmm. It's just maintained. Like there are diamond mines in Kimberley, Africa. They burn 40 tons of diamonds every year. They're made of carbon. That keeps the price up. If you keep turning out diamonds, the price goes down. So what you have to do, they're selling watches today 
for five bucks, it used to sell for forty bucks. A lot of watch companies are turning them out. They're much cheaper today, but they're killing the watch industry. Yeah. The good watches, you know, the expensive ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, that if you can maintain scarcity, you can maintain price. Oh. But if you have scarcity of houses and people don't have money to buy houses, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. Sure. Good so yeah. when you say, how do you pro prioritize? Prioritize. Yeah. What? Who decides what is important? Is what you really want. Yeah. Who decides? There is no who. Here's how it's done. We know <coughs> the first problems will be feeding people. So we we extrude. You know what that means? Extrude. Mm -hmm. We extrude bread continuously. The machine pumps dough out continuously. So the bread is one long, gigantic loaf. Then it's cut up. The bread contains every vitamin needed to live. So we produce that first to make sure people have food in the world. But you don't send them canned soup or anything. You dehydrate the soup. You know what that means? Take the water out, hermetically seal it, so one package will make a volume of soup. Do mm -hmm. you understand yeah. But if you go to schools and say bring in a loaf of bread, a can of beans, the package gets enormous. So all our packaging becomes uniform. In it. And the stuff that the packaging is made of is biodegradable. Not only is it biodegradable, but it's made of nutrients for the soil. So when you throw it out there, it helps plants grow. There is no packaging that's dumped in the field. Like Everything is recycled. All buildings are made of components that slip together. And as you move on, you disengage it. You don't throw it out or burn it down. Mm -hmm. There are no fire engines because nothing can burn in the future. Now, today, it's better to sell refrigerators and sinks for every home. In the future, there'll be dining areas. You don't need to make bacon and eggs every morning, the same fucking routine. <laughs> Mother's making bacon and eggs. you got machines today that could make that by the t ton. And you go to a restaurant, it's more efficient than instead of a refrigerator in every home. But you do have, you know what a dumb waiter is? It's like a little elevator. So you can dial what you want and get the food brought up to your home if you want that. Or you can cook your own food if you want that. It's just inefficient. I'd say people do that because they don't have any other options. But in the future you'll go out and have Swedish food, Greek food, and that's when this young lady came to me and said, I've been a waitress most of my life. Will I be a waitress in the Venus Project? I said, no, we don't need that. Because the minute you sit at a table, the menu lights up. There might be a picture in the table. But when you sit down the menu, then it scans you. You wear a bracelet or something which identifies you. And if he has diabetes, the food is manipulated for him. So it scans everybody at the table, not like Big Brother watching over you. It's there to give you the best food to help you. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, no, there's no cook in the kitchen. Chef Milani, or a good cook, will prepare food in front of the computer. I don't know if you know how they work, but in the auto industry, they spray rubber under the metals of an automobile so the rain won't drive you crazy metal cars are insulated. Mm -hmm. But in order for a robot to do that, a man takes a spray gun and he gets under the car and he sprays the rubber and the unit follows him. It follows every move he makes and there's a program chip. And they slip it in. Well, you only have to do it once mm -hmm. and the machine will spray the rubber on every part of the car, just mm -hmm. like a man does. Mm -hmm. So if a guy puts Coke bottle covers on, you know, he has to do it the first time, but the computer picks that up. Then you put the chip in, and it does that. Yeah. You change the chip, it does something else. So you don't need to train people to do a uniform job. All uniform jobs are automated. Like, I don't know, if you go to Home Depot today, they're beginning to put machines in rather than a cashier, yeah. and you put your card through it. That does away with the cashier. Mm -hmm. If you carry that out completely, you'll see that eventually all industries are becoming more and more automatic. That means people won't have the purchasing power.